This Week on the Splash. Greater West Bloomfield takes care of its health. Then we get an update on the Orchard Lake road traffic. And later we explore how our pets can help us heal. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories. Also that we can bring you the latest from the Greater West Bloomfield area. And now let's dive into The Splash. Welcome to The Splash. I'm your host, Sheena Manin, and as always, thank you for joining us. The Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce recently held their 8th annual Health and Wellness Fair, helping residents of the Greater West Bloomfield area better their mind, body, and soul. I went to West Bloomfield Township Hall for the story. There's no doubt that health is something we all take seriously. And here at West Bloomfield's Health and Wellness Fair, a group of professionals gathered to share their expertise with us. Over 35 vendors came out to Town Hall for the 8th Annual Health and Wellness Fair to engage the public on the latest directions in healthy living. I think it's very welcoming. Um, it's very friendly. Lots of good information. And it's always good to find out what the latest trends are. We're here because we believe in health and wellness and it's part of the mission of our hospital and um, we're happy to be part of, of the fair today. As each year passes, more and more is learned about just what we need to do to ensure we become our healthiest selves. When it comes to foods, where your food sources are coming from, uh, that's the biggest thing to remove, you know, a lot of toxic stuff and artificial um, things that find their way into your body is knowing exactly where your foods are coming from, how they're handled, and um, you know, the more you know, the better choices you can make in life. I truly believe that it's the chemicals that are in our food, that what we breathe on a daily basis, and as much as you can eliminate it uh, in your daily life, whether it be your cleaning products, um, what you put in your body, um, what you put on your body, will make a huge difference. Sleep is really important for regenerative properties. Uh, people that get enough sleep tend to have better healing responses. You know, anywhere between seven to nine hours a night tend to have the best results. And, and really, that sleep period helps people regenerate damaged or unhealthy tissue. While these experts spend their days talking to others about maintaining health, they also practice what they preach. I drink a lot of water. Uh, I think I believe in drinking a lot of water every day, flushes your body, and then every night we go for a walk. Healthy cooking, healthy eating. It's so easy to grab whatever's available without thinking. And um, I think what I've learned from older adults too is preparing ahead of time. Many of folks in that generation are really good cooks. Um, I try to eat healthy. Uh, I have two little kids at home. Uh, they're three and two. Uh, my wife's also a physician, so we tend to be pretty busy. Uh, we try to get up as early as we can to exercise. That doesn't always happen because when the kids are up, it's a little challenging. Running a burgeoning township such as West Bloomfield can often be stressful work. So our leaders have to find time in their busy schedules to focus on health as well. I walk a lot. I do a lot of you know, miles. Actually, one of my, I'll bring up one of my favorite places to walk is we have a trail network in West Bloomfield, the West Bloomfield Trail Network. I live right, in, it's in my backyard. So I walk out my backyard and I go walking on the trail and I do a lot of walking miles. Well, I exercise every day and so it's really important whether you're walking or doing weights. I think it's really important because you know it releases endorphins, which is so important for your body-mind connections. But I do walk every day for 30 minutes while carrying a transistor radio and listening to a talk show. I swim at the sports club. So I, especially in the summer when that tops down after work, there's nothing better than jumping in the pool over there. So I really enjoy that. And then from a healthy mind and perspective, I work with great people like Debbie, Steve, and you know the people here in Town Hall. And we have such a positive environment here at work that it really does help you feel healthier. From physical to mental to environmental, there are a myriad of ways for you to keep your good health intact. Reporting for The Splash, this is Sheena Manin. It's always great to learn new ways to take care of ourselves and live happier. For more information on the 8th Annual Health and Wellness Fair, you can visit us at civiccentertv.com slash healthfair. We now move on to this week's Splash Traffic Update. We sent reporter Samana Sheik into town to speak with local officials and residents on the current status of the construction on Orchard Lake Road. Hi, this is Samana Sheik reporting for the Splash. And this week I was able to interview the West Bloomfield supervisor as well as nearby residents on the Orchard Lake construction and the progress of it. 
Orchard Lake has been under construction this summer. The overall development of the road has had a lot of progress so far and will continue to have more throughout the hot summer months. The construction is that the eastbound safety paths no longer are in operation, but the westbound safety paths are. Currently, Orchard Lake Boulevard, we call it the boulevard because it will be a boulevard, has three lanes, northbound, southbound, and a continuous left turn lane. The entire Orchard Lake project will eventually cover north of 14 mile road and northwestern highway. During the construction, one lane will remain open in each direction to control traffic flow. As of right now, Roadside Commission has stated that by mid-November, all behind the curb restoration will be complete. Also, by the end of October, light poles will be added to the busy street, helping better the community of West Bloomfield. We are going to hit some bumpy roads when the construction is going on, but overall I feel that it's going to be a good thing for everyone here. I think it's going to be very positive once the construction is done. Overall, looking on Orchard Lake, I feel that it's, it's going to benefit everyone here again. And just looking forward to the future. Dan's Excavating is the contractor for this project, and the East Service Drive along Orchard Lake Road will be eliminated. The elimination will help provide more safety and improve traffic flow in the near future. I feel like the construction has been very diligent and efficient and the way they have already expanded into Northwestern Highway is really beneficial for us because there's going to be a less traffic flow. For continuing construction updates, keep tuning in to Civic Center TV. Reporting for The Splash, this is Samana Sheik. Thanks, Samana. And if you'd like to stay up to date on all the latest traffic reports within West Bloomfield, you can visit wbtownship.org and click on the Road Construction Updates tab on their homepage. Still to come, we explore how our furry friends are being utilized to fight illnesses and recover from injuries. And later, we hear from some more residents of Greater West Bloomfield on Sidewalk Talk. Don't go away, you're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Now, back to the splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to the splash. I'm your host, Sheena Manin. There's an old saying that dogs are man's best friend. At Encompass Healthcare and Wound Medicine in West Bloomfield, they also serve as man's best healers. Splash reporter Andrea Petrus has the story. Medical treatments can be difficult and scary. That's where Dr. Rubin and his team come in, bringing comfort to patients with a variety of ailments. This is a very unique facility, the only one of its kind, which is barrier-free. Patients who have bone infections, skin and soft tissue infections, multiple kinds of chronic infections come here to get intravenous antibiotics. We keep people out of hospitals. It's a much more dignified way of getting your therapy. When patients come through the doors of Encompass Healthcare, they're greeted with more than just a friendly, smiling face. My dogs, Inky and Pocket, are here with me every day. They love patients. Inky all day long goes up to patients and takes her head and puts her hand underneath their arms. And Pocket sits around, uh, very handsome, waiting for attention. And it seems to me that most of my patients thrive in the environment of having therapy dogs like Inky and Pocket. I recall that when I myself had medical maladies, dogs were probably the most comforting part of my healing. Sometimes you may be anxious, nervous, and you're very vulnerable. 
The role of my dogs is to ease that feeling. Most people like the feeling of being unconditionally loved, and it's probably the best medicine they could get. Inky and Pocket, they fulfilled their duty regularly on a daily basis. It's just nice coming here, kind of relaxed atmosphere, and um, especially with them walking around and patting them, and I think it's a good atmosphere to be in. Patients look forward to coming to get their treatment. It makes them more adherent to the treatment, which is very rigorous. And if you're excited about coming to a place to get your treatment, then the treatment outcomes are going to be positive. The most common reason why people fail treatment is not taking the treatment. They love coming here, and they love uh, sneaking in treats for the dogs. So ultimately, everybody wins. For more information, visit EncompassHealthcare.com or call 248-624-9800. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Andrea Petrus. Thanks, Andrea. And for more details on the wounds, dogs, and pet therapy, visit us at civiccentertv.com slash wounddogs. Now it's time for another episode of Sidewalk Talk. This week, we take a walk down memory lane with one of our favorite episodes. Enjoy. Hi, George Moore for Civic Center TV and The Splash. We're out on the streets of the greater West Bloomfield area once again, asking questions that evoke interesting answers. Join us. Who was your best friend? How'd you meet? My best friend, her name is Karina Peterson. She actually just recently moved to Seattle, Washington. And we met, we grew up together. We met when we were like five. So a long time BFF. Long time. I got too many best friends. I can't, I can't just say one. Well, I'll say one of my best friends. Um, I won't name, but we're still good friends. And we met in school and we were BFFs for a long time. My best friend is a kid named Charles that I actually don't even talk to much anymore, but it was just the only person I really had who was a friend at school. And the only person I actually stayed connected with, sorta. God, I don't have a best, best friend. I used to have a best friend, but she doesn't talk to me anymore. So I don't get... <laughs> I have a lot of best friends. I can't say that. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> uh, my husband. Who's your best friend and how'd you meet? Oh, my best friend is my sister. <laughs> and we met because we were raised together. My best friend's a guy named Neil Stone. He's got a jewelry store right down the street here, uh, just south of Maple, called Stone's Jewelry, and we met in kindergarten. Wow, that far back, huh? Yeah, yeah we're 64 now. Well, my best friend is my sister, who you just spoke with, and um, we live together. <laughs> we grew up together, but I've known her all my life. I'm about two years older than she is. My oldest best friend is, has been my friend since eighth grade. I moved to Houston, and it was my first day of class, was on my way into algebra class, and I dropped my books. She helped me pick them up, and we've been best friends ever since. Can you believe some of the questions we ask? Neither can I, but you answered them as always. So we got some good stuff. So until you see us next time for Civic Center TV and The Splash, I'm George Moore. Sidewalk Talk. And it's always good to hear from one of our best friends, George Moore. And if you'd like to see some of our other fun and interesting questions on the show, you can do so anytime and anywhere by visiting our website at civiccentertv.com slash sidewalk talk. And now it's time for our Civic Center event update, where we provide you with all the latest that's happening around Greater West Bloomfield. And if you'd like to stay up to date on all of the following current events yourself, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash events. Let's get started.
Enjoy a relaxing lunch at Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital on July 14th with Jazz on the Patio. Join us on the beautiful patio terrace at Henry's Cafe where Motor City Q-Tet will be playing classic jazz and blues tunes from all of the greats from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The event is free of charge. And on July 15th, join the West Bloomfield Library for their Adult Coding Club at the main library in the Computer Lab at 2 p.m. Whether you are a beginner or an experienced coder, you are encouraged to join, learn, and write some code. Through guided and independent instruction, you will build skills in a number of languages, including processing, Python, JavaScript, and more. To register, please visit wblib.org. Come out to the Berman Center for the Performing Arts on July 16th at noon for Through the Eye of the Needle, the Art of Esther Nisenthal Krinitz, an award-winning film about the human heart's capacity to heal from all wounds. The story follows Holocaust survivor Esther Nisenthal Krinitz on her journey through the Holocaust and shows us how we can build a just and peaceful world for all. Admission is free. And after the film at the Janice Chirac Gallery, Esther Nisenthal Krinitz shares her story of survival during the Holocaust through her works of fabric art. Esther began her fabric pieces in 1977 and is bringing many of her creations right here to West Bloomfield. Enjoy the vivid colors and careful attention to detail as each stitch tells you the harrowing story of Esther's survival. The exhibit opens on Sunday, July 16th and will run through September 19th. Join the West Bloomfield Public Library at West Bloomfield High School to teach your children how they can reduce their waste footprint. On July 18th at 10.30 a.m., children will master the concepts of reducing trash, reusing items, and recycling, and understand how these concepts affect the world around them. At the end of the event, there will be a recycling relay where your kids can put their knowledge into action. The event is for ages 5 to 12 years old, and no registration is required. The Marshbank Music Series continues with the eight-time Detroit Music Awards-nominated Boa Constrictors, a Detroit blues band with a pure Detroit attitude. On July 19th, starting at 7 p.m., take a walk through Detroit's musical history. Food will be available for purchase from the Optimist Club of West Bloomfield, and the concert is absolutely free. On July 20th at 11 a.m., come by the Concert Hill at Marshbank Park for music that will make you move. Palamazoo's playful, bluesy style is sure to capture everyone's attention at this Kids Commotion concert. Bluesy Susie and company will wow you with their upbeat, interactive performances, colorful characters, and enchanting stories in this fun concert just for kids. Bouncy houses will be available one hour before the show, so make sure to wear socks. The event is free of charge. Kids between the ages of 6 and 12 are invited to create fun, go-to snack ideas to keep the energy high all summer long. This interactive class will be on Saturday, July 22nd, from 10 a.m. till noon. This class is designed for children ages 6 to 12, and registration is required. This class costs $25 per child. To register, visit henryford.com. Enjoy ballads and dances from the United Kingdom as Celtic fusion ensemble Nessa comes to the West Bloomfield Public Library. Their performance on July 23rd blends elements of classical, folk, jazz, funk, and world music in a rich, complex arrangement of musical hybrids. The concert begins at 3 p.m. and no registration is required to attend. Kick up your fins for a jawsome pool party. Starting at 1 p.m., join West Bloomfield Parks on July 23rd for Shark Attack at the Family Aquatic Center. There will be plenty of shark fin races, fun photo opportunities, and games for the whole family. Come dressed in your best shark attire and get ready to take over the seas. Regular admission fees do apply, but no registration is required. 
On July 25th at 2 p.m., Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital presents Caregiver Organization, Getting It Together, in their private dining room. Caregivers are invited to learn strategies and tips for getting organized and developing useful techniques. All participants will receive a caregiver binder to assist with organizing their loved one's medical papers, recording vital signs, tracking medications, and more. There is a $25 fee to attend. For more information, please visit henryford.com. Join us on July 29th and 30th for the 15th annual Orchard Lake Fine Art Show, sponsored by Hotworks Fine Art and Fine Craft Shows. This event brings up to 175 juried fine art and craft artists from all over the world with art for sale to the public, including paintings, sculptures, clay, glass, photography, jewelry, and more. Stop by and join our very own 89.3 WBLD, the all-new Lakes FM's live broadcast as you browse and shop. For more information, visit hotworks.org or visit our website at civiccentertv.com. And that's all for now. However, if you're looking to find even more events going on in your neighborhood, then be sure to follow us at civiccentertv.com slash events and look up our events calendar or watch us here for more information on everything going on in the greater West Bloomfield area. As we head into the break, stay tuned, because afterwards, I'll be talking with former Israeli Olympic swimmer and owner of Aqua Club, Neem Shapira. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Sheena Manan, and my guest on the show this week is Neem Shapira, a former Olympic swimmer for Israel and the owner of Aqua Club. Thank you so much for being with us here today. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Now, you've had an amazing and exciting career so far, and I'm sure there's lots of great things to come, but you are a two-time Olympic swimmer, yeah. and you founded the fast-growing Aqua Swim Club. Yeah. But from what I understand, there was a life-changing experience that sort of set you on this journey a little bit by accident. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, when I was young, I drowned. I fell into a pool during a birthday party, and one of my family members jumped to save me and um, that's pretty much the trauma that I had as a kid and later on I found it to be my passion. Yes absolutely and then while you were playing a totally unrelated sport mm -hmm. you had an injury. Basketball. Yes yeah. tell us about that. So I was a basketball player later on in life and at 11 years of age I injured my knee and I couldn't play for a while and my coach advised me to go to swimming and I went to swimming and I never came back. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. And so from that experience, what, did you fall in love with swimming? Were you a natural at swimming it? Swimming was the quiet place for me. It was a place for me to put my head in the water and swim, have a two-hour practice, and just forget about everything. It was, it was something that I didn't experience before because basketball was a team sport. Mm -hmm. Swimming was about caring for my own body um, and really having a quiet place. 
That makes a lot of sense to me, absolutely. Yeah. Now you went from there and became an Olympic swimmer. That must have been quite a feat. Tell us about that. It, it was a few years later. Um, it wasn't from 11 years old right into the Olympics. Um, the process was very long. I went from um, Israel to England uh, and from England to Florida, always chasing and looking for the best programs for swimming. I later on went to college in University of Arizona um, and I swam there NCAAs and won NCAAs. Um, swimming was really a place for me to always look how to get the best out of my body. Um, it was my passion, it's, it's my sport, it's something that I'm going to do for the rest of my life. That's wonderful, yeah, I love and, it. And, and that led to the Olympics. So there yes. were many, many years leading into it. Now, that's sort of what you're trying to accomplish with the Aqua Swim Club, is to give young adults the opportunity to pursue competitive swimming if they want to, or just learn some of the swimming basics so they can not drown, as you almost did. Tell yeah. me a little bit about the competitive aspect of the Aqua Swim Club, especially those here in West Bloomfield. So the competitive aspect of it is ranging. We have three different levels, um, depending if you want to be two times a week or every um, day of the week swimmer. We have different levels. Um, we had a national championship kid that swam with the program, and we also have kids that just compete during the summer. So it really depends to what you want out of the sport. I believe that swimming is a sport of a community. It's connecting people. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking just to come and swim and, and be in shape and race with your friends during the summer, we have that. If you're looking to race nationally and in the future internationally, we have that as well. That's wonderful. It's all-encompassing, which is really yeah. important. Yeah, we give solution to everyone. Good. Now, what age would you recommend people start on this journey if they're interested? We starting is two months old. So the sooner you start in swimming, the better. Um, I didn't know this until I was actually a senior in college, but the biggest cause of death for kids five and under is drowning. Oh, wow. Okay, I drowned much later in life, but yeah. um, here in Michigan, we have lakes everywhere. We have water all around us. Um, so for that purpose, we start as young as babies. Mm -hmm. We have probably about 100 families of babies and parents in the water every week. That's amazing. Um, so the yeah. sooner you start, the better. So tell us a little bit about some of the goals that you have for the Aqua Swim Club moving into the future. The biggest goal is to get people more in, more people in the pool. Um, the second goal is to actually perfect the service that we give our members. Um, we have 500 families about in our program all around our facilities. We want to make sure all of them get the same style of swimming. We don't want one facility or one kid to get a different service than the other. We want to make it a community. We want to make it a fun place for everyone. Um, and at the end of the day, it's all about culture. You can see I'm all orange. That, that's the culture of our program. We're always representing what, what Aqua Club stands for. Wonderful. Well, we're really glad to have your presence here in West Bloomfield, and we appreciate having you on Absolutely. our show here today. And, and once again, everyone, Nim Shapira from Aqua Club. For more information, visit www.aquaswimclub.com. Now let's head over to another of our recurring segments called A Minute with Nature, where West Bloomfield Park naturalist Lauren Azuri discusses tasty treats that can be found right in our backyard. Hello and welcome to Minute with Nature. I'm your host, Lauren Azuri, the park naturalist for West Bloomfield Parks. And today we're outside our nature room talking about wild edibles. So before we start talking about the good things you can eat, I do want to give you a little bit word of the wise that it is a myth that you can eat anything an animal eats. So if you're outside enjoying a nature walk and you see a bird or a deer eat a berry, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe for you to eat. Also make sure that you check different park rules. Some of them allow wild foraging and some parks do not. With that all being said though, there's lots of fun that can be found out just in your backyard and things that you can eat. One of them is red clover. You can eat all the parts of a red clover plant. Red clover is often found amongst your grass. It has three leaves and a purple flower on the top and all parts are edible. Dandelions are also a great wild edible that we see a lot of times in abundance. The young leaves before they get their flower taste just like spinach. Once they start to get bigger and they um, grow a little bit more, you can still eat the leaves, but it's recommended that you boil them so it's not as bitter of a taste. 
And cattails make a great wild edible in all seasons. It's so basically a wild grocery store year round. So there's different parts of the plant that are edible in different times of the year. In the very early spring when they start to emerge, the young shoots that come up taste just like cucumbers. The flower spikes that you notice probably more so in the fall seasons that are brown, before those turn brown, they are a green color, and those are great to boil and eat just like corn on the cob. And keep in mind, cattails do grow in wetland areas, and they have an important job to do. They filter a lot of the water in a wetland area. So if you're eating cattails in a clean water, you're great. If you're eating cattails in a polluted area, you will be ingesting some of those pollutants, so you don't want to eat cattails from dirty water. Other wild edibles um, include wild strawberries and raspberries and blackberries that we can find a lot in our trails behind the Recreation Activity Center. But again, with berries, always be careful that you have proper identification. Um, you can bring a field guide with you or a friend that knows what they're talking about before you start trying things. Another great wild edible is the morel mushroom. They're very popular and found in early spring, but please make sure if you're looking for morels that you use proper identification because there are a lot of dangerous lookalikes. But wild edibles can be very fun when done right. And that's your Minute with Nature. Great advice, Lauren. Looks like I found a new summer hobby. For more information, go to www.civiccentertv.com slash MWN. And now it's time for our final segment on the splash called Person of the Week, where we recognize those within the community who are either inspiring or providing toward others. And this week's recipient is Helen Jane Peters, a Sylvan Lake and Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society historian. <music> Helen Jane Peters is Sylvan Lake's walking history book. She dedicates her life to telling and protecting the stories and artifacts from which the prettiest little city in the state of Michigan was born and passes these tokens of the past onto the residents of Sylvan Lake today. In addition to being the Sylvan Lake historian, Helen Jane is also a historian for the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society, where she provides a look into the history of our entire area, showing us where we came from and giving us a look into where we are going. Helen Jane is a recipient of the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society's Distinguished Service Award, a symbol of the many years that she has committed to collecting, preserving, and sharing the history of the Greater West Bloomfield area, stories of us. For her dedication and preservation of the community, Helen Jane Peters is our Person of the Week. And if you happen to know someone who is providing a service to our community, then let us know by sending an email to the splash at civiccentertv.com. We want to congratulate those who are making a difference in our area, and we appreciate all of your suggestions. That's going to do it for us this week. But remember, you can watch new episodes of The Splash this summer every other Monday at 6.30 p.m. or throughout the week for replays. You can also watch every episode online at civiccentertv.com. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Civic Center TV, on YouTube at Civic Center TV 15, and on Facebook under Civic Center TV 15 for more information. For all of our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Sheena Monin. Thank you for watching The Splash.